I'm excited to talk about today's topic because today we're discussing the Canon EFS 17-55 f2.8 image stabilized lens. So the 70-55 f2.8 is an EFS lens, that means it provides coverage up to APS-C size sensors. For the 6K, that's totally fine. This is one of the best cinematic sensors that's currently out there. It has tremendous dynamic range and the image quality is just... It shares a lot of the coatings with the L-series brand of Canon lenses. Now those are the top of the line in terms of quality lenses that you can get for the stills bodies that Canon has made. I think all L-series lenses are weather sealed. This one isn't. And of course, normally L-series lenses are all made for full frame sensors. This is made for ABS-C and you cannot connect it to a full frame sensor without some noticeable vignetting on the corners. It basically looks like you're looking up from a tube. Some camera bodies with full frame sensors do have an APS-C mode and most of the Sony A7 series can do that they window a small section of the sensor and only get the image from there. So if you have an APS-C lens, technically you can use it, but of course that comes at the cost of reduced sensor coverage. At the wide end, it goes to 17 millimeters and that's, on this body especially, it's not super wide, I have to say, off the bat. So if you're planning on filming yourself, for instance, on a crop body. This is how weird, first of all, this is a brick on my hand. It's really heavy and it's totally not worth it. I'm probably not even in focus but this is what it's like to hold the camera in front of you at 17 millimeters yeah there you have it my hands probably shaking because it's so heavy. when you go all the way to 55 millimeters the image quality is just surreal i find it genuinely pleasing i find that the bokeh that this sensor in combination with with this lens produces fades away the background into nothingness but it does it in a very characteristic sharp edgy way it's not soft by any means This lens actually is also known to be quite clinically precise and pretty sharp. Although the model that I have has aged quite a bit and I'm not sure it's as sharp as it was meant to be from the factory. Other things that happened to this lens along its journey in life. When I paid for this lens, it was supposed to ship with image stabilization working, with autofocus working. I paid for a fully functional lens basically. I paid 200 quid for this on eBay. And when it arrived, I the first thing I did was just to explore, see if all the functions work, and to my surprise, image stabilization was completely shot. It started to do this wide, possessed dance from, I don't know which horror movie, pick your favorite. It just started acting quite crazy. And um, image stabilization was actually one of the main reasons why I bought this lens in the first place, because the 6K does not come with in-body stabilization from the factory. Because of the way that this body is shaped. Actually, it's a pretty odd camera to hold and to, to grasp in your hands and it's pretty busy. And to have image stabilization would have been a godsend. And that was the one feature that didn't work. It was a little heartbreaking, I'll be honest. But then I was able to negotiate the price down from 200 quid to 70. And at 70, this is an incredible deal. So I basically got a little bit lucky and I got, well, if you can call it that, and I got this complete lens with the original cap and the back cap and everything for 70 quid with the image stabilization. Um, sometimes not working. Sometimes it does work, but I tend not to risk it, especially if what I'm doing is high value. Then comes the autofocus part. Now the autofocus on the 6K is one of the worst that exists. It's pretty useless anyway. So I ended up not testing in the autofocus system in that much detail. The best thing is the constant aperture of 2.8. So basically you can be 
you can start a scene at 17 millimeters and you can end it up at 55 and your aperture is going to remain constant. A lot of the other EFS lenses is in this focal range, especially for instance, the kit lens that comes with most cheap DSLRs was the EFS 18 to 55, if I remember that correctly. When you actually go all the way to the 55 part of the lens, basically reduces the aperture as well. That doesn't happen on this lens and it continues to provide great depth of field at 55 millimeters and it's just the image at 55 i think it's one of my favorite lenses at around that focal length um, it also behaves really well at, at 17 and it, don't get me wrong it, it it performs throughout the focal length range but at 55 is where i find its sweet spot is it's really a pretty good lens if you want to do detailed shots of stuff and the background fades away i think it's it's one of the perfect lenses for that try to get a version that has image stabilization that's functional the second problem that this lens is kind of infamous for is its ability to suck in dust i know this looks like a lens and that you can it's attached in front of the camera it must be a lens it's actually a vacuum cleaner if i with just with this action of zooming in and out it's basically sucking in all the available dust in the room and then it's going to put it right here between the the front element and the empty space in between it's just riddled with gets riddled with dust the other thing is that this is not weather sealed for me that's fine because the 6k actually has vents everywhere so i'm not planning on using this camera outdoors in the rain anytime soon so it's okay for my purposes paired with the blackmagic 6k it's actually a brilliant lens because if you come and think about it this lens is meant for use with bodies that have sensors that are reasonably high in megapixel value. You can easily get this lens on something like an 18 megapixel or 24 megapixel sensor and it performs really well. So stands to reason that when shooting in 6K, it does a, at least a half decent job. And I find that this lens is perfectly sharp all throughout the, um, the focal length range. Now at 55 millimeters, you have to consider the, the cropped um, sensor body and the effect that that's gonna have. So you get effectively around 90 millimeters in focal length that's a lot that's pretty much telephoto lens at that point so anywhere but above 70 for instance this is a generic value but let's say between 70 and 90 is a really ideal place to compress your subject especially if you're shooting portraits so for that purpose i find that this lens is exceptional and provides really good value for money at 17 millimeters because it's f 2.8 you can get pretty good performance in low light as well. And your image remains stable fairly decently, especially at the wide angle. At 55, especially in the example that I have with image stabilization turned off, images are a little bit too wobbly for handheld use, but for use on a tripod or actually, I tried mounting this on a gimbal and I did get it to work, but the movements were not steady at all after that. It's just, it became too disproportionately um, weighted. I know it's it's an odd combination of words to use, but that's how it feels. It feels really uncomfortable to hold this on a Ronin S, especially, you know, the, the 6K is awkward enough. And then when you have a lens that protrudes this far ahead, I think it's already quite a bit to handle. But generally speaking, the image quality that comes out of it is pretty nice. I'm a big fan of the image that comes out of this sensor and lens combination. And let's show you some shots. Strange if I did 
make a move, gotta make a way, pack another bag, I might go today, take a trip, might take a flight, make a new home for the night. Make a I find that this lens is built really well. You don't get the feeling that this is a cheap lens, and it wasn't. When this thing was new, I think it was shipping for somewhere between 900 and 1,000 quid. That's a lot for an EFS lens. But I think this, this lens is, is totally worth it. All in all, I really like this lens and I would totally recommend it, but just be careful. Make sure that there's not a lot of dust. If you have any questions or comments about this lens, please feel free to reach out. Find me in the comments box below. Um, or if you have any questions about the Blackmagic 6K as well, feel free to reach out and I will try my best to answer them. Thank you so very much for watching. Until next time. Ciao. Don't